Let's take a look at what they found. On the y-axis, we have the percentage of conformity, and on the x-axis, we have the three different levels of fear. When Janice and Feshbach looked at the net change in conformity with the dental hygiene recommendations in the persuasive message, they found that it was actually the group of participants who received the low fear message who went along with the message the most. These results suggest that fear can have the opposite effect to that that we want. Researchers call this a boomerang effect. This seems surprising. You might have expected that the high fear message would produce the most conformity. But it seems that a high fear message can sometimes result in increased resistance from the audience as they try to block out the fear inducing message. This is not always the case however, and other researchers have found the opposite pattern of results, with high fear messages being more persuasive. It turns out that it depends on whether you provide information about how to effectively respond to the fear inducing threat that's included in the persuasive message. Exactly how to do this was set out in 1983 by Rogers in a revision of protection motivation theory. According to Rogers, for fear to increase the persuasiveness of a message, the message needs to tell you that the threat is severe, that it can affect you, but that there's an effective behaviour to avoid the danger posed by the threat, and that you're able to perform whatever that behaviour is.